The softest tap speaks the loudest voice. Movement creating a beat that can inflame the heart and soothe the soul. The passionate sound created in motion, guided by strings musically speaking, and the voice passionately singing. Flamenco. de la mañana Hoy despierto siempre preguntando a dónde está Con mi aliento en el cristal Hoy de mi ventana Y bello mi barquillo Echarse a la mar Y a la mar Flamenco, a centuries-old dance created halfway across the world to tell one story, now deeply rooted in the heart of San Antonio. With every note strummed, every foot tapped, flamenco began to create a life, a legacy, una familia.
Willie, Teresa, united by flamenco, bonded by love, infusing two souls for a lifetime. At this time, I want to take the opportunity to introduce to you the lady that made flamenco possible in San Antonio. She brought it back to life 40 years ago and it had not been done in the missions for 300 years. We're very proud of her because she's brought us a beautiful art form and a new thing here in San Antonio. If you see flamenco anywhere in San Antonio, she had something to do with it. She has a wonderful dance academy. She got her degree from Bellas Artes in Mexico City. We're very proud of her. The director and choreographer of Los Flamencos de San Antonio, Teresa Champion. Hola! Venga. Teresa Champion is una mujer fuerte, una mujer that was able to teach, perform, take care of the kids, and be an artist, and continue to, to raise her children and do what she loved, which was flamenco. My first and foremost, Teresa Champion is my grandmother, my teacher, my mentor, and my legend. Uh, Teresa Champion is like the icon of flamenco here in San Antonio. She is the first uh, dancer that brought the art of flamenco to San Antonio. So when you talk about flamenco, that first person name you're going to think of is Teresa Champion. That clicks everybody. She's an amazing woman. She has touched so many lives. It's incredible. Teresa is one of those very humble people. She doesn't realize who she is. She, She'll be at a restaurant and she'll say, oh, those people keep staring at me and I can't eat. And I said, I'm like, who, oh, mother? She goes, why are they looking at me? And she'll start looking at herself. I said, mom, they recognize you. From what? They dije, because you're Teresa Champion. I went to Mexico to learn folklorico at Bellas Artes because I wanted to be a dance teacher. Never knew that I was going to be a professional dancer. Little did I know that I was a professional dancer first, and at the age of 35, I was the first dance teacher for Ballet Folklorico in San Antonio. I never thought I was gonna be a professional dancer. I wanted to be a teacher. And then I, I, I went, like I said, for Folklorico, and then one day I was passing by and I heard the guitar. A month later, and I said, Hi, what's that? I like that, it was a guitar. So I went to the little room, there were little rooms where they teach, and I look in the, in the little window, and there it is, the flamenco guitarist, the flamenco singer, and the, the lady, the teacher was dancing. I said, oh, one girl was dancing. I said, oh. I fell in love with flamenco. I said, I told my mother, I don't want a folklorico no more. She goes, no, you came here for folklorico. I never went back to folklorico. I, every year that I went to Mexico, four or six months, it was flamenco. So then when I fell in love with it, I just, the girl was dancing so beautiful. I said, I want to dance like her, you know. Flamenco is more, it gets, it gets, to me, I don't know about the rest. I'm not talking about the rest dancers. I'm talking about me, Teresa. I feel something inside of me, something that is, I cannot explain what it is, but I feel like I'm somewhere. I don't even know if I have family or anything. I'm dancing, dancing, dancing. When I stop, now I know that I'm Teresa and I have a daughter and I have a granddaughter and I da 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 da. But when I'm dancing, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in another world. It goes into, you hear the music, you go into it. El duende, you know, el duende te entra and then you start dancing one way. Like I said, you're happy, you dance one way, you're angry, another way, you're sad, another way. All right, I don't, you don't think, I don't think. I'm singing and I'm there in the moment, and that's very important as a flamenco, a singer, dancer, musician, because what happens is duende, which is the spirit of flamenco, which we feel comes around and fills us, will connect all of us. I sit and I sing, but when there's a dancer and the duende's there, I stand up. I stand up and I start to sing. And I give them everything I have, everything I have, because duende's just taken over the dancer, myself, the guitarist, the palmeras and everything, and it's just this, and then we finish the show and they're like, wow, that took everything out of me. And I said, yeah, because duende was there pulling it out. He left you with nothing, he needed it there. And that's what happens when Duende takes over and it doesn't do it all the time. Once the guitar starts going, 
once it starts the singing going, it just like, it just comes out. And I'll do things and I just feel things. Because you have to have the duende, you have to have that feeling. I'll do some stuff even in performing that I don't even remember doing when I finish. And they'll tell me, oh my God, my sister, man, that step you did, or what did you do you didn't? I'm like, I don't know. Because I was in the moment, in the duende, when I was performing. So for me, I do feel that when I go perform. When the singing comes in and the guitar comes in together, me, my soul, my mind, I'm feeling, feeling it at that moment. So I'll do completely different things sometimes. So I never have the same routine. I do what I feel in the moment. I'm telling my story in the moment. I'm not, I'm, I don't have an actual choreographed routine. I truly believe that flamenco is the story of yourself what you have to share in your body uh, to the audience. And it should be done individually. Um, do we perform in small groups? Yes. But I like the idea of being able to self-express myself on stage by myself because it's my story and I don't have to do that with everybody else. Not everybody's going to understand my story. So for me, it's, a, it's an individual form of expression. His name is William P. Champion, El Curro. My mother would call him Willie. Willie, usted sabe tocar flamenco? My husband said this, Curro, what's that? What's flamenco? Oh, it's music from Spain. My daughter knows flamenco, it's music from Spain. She went to Mexico City and she studied with the best teacher, Oscar Tarriba from Spain, the best teacher, but we need a guitar. She goes, oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, another show. My mother bought a, a Savica's record. <laughs> it was record in my time. There were records. There were not CD, CDs. There were records. And my mother bought a record. He goes, Willie. And Willie, my husband, said, Yes, yes, Miss Martinez. And he goes, I got you a record. Listen to it. It's flamenco. It's Carlos Arru Carlos Montoya, Savicas, all the, all the musicians of flamenco that you can think in Mexico. Went to Mexico, my mother bought all the, all the records and gave it to him. And he goes, okay, listen to them, just learn one. So my daughter can dance because I went so many, for me, for a long time to Mexico to love flamenco and she's never danced it before because nobody knows. If you can learn just one, so she can dance on the shows. He told me that he said to his brothers, I'm just gonna learn one because this lady is not gonna let me go. If I learn one, that's it. I don't have to do it no more. I just learn one. So the very first dance that I danced with 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 Kuro was Malagueña de Lecona. It was a very beautiful classic music, and I danced it with him. And then my mom said, "Do you think you think you can now do another one, but flamenco, so my my daughter can stamp?" <laughs> and he goes, "I'll try." So you know. Little by little, Willie said that he started liking it. He's a self-taught. Could have never took a class. He was the first flamenco guitarist in San Antonio, and everybody liked him. And Kuro was a very good person. He was down to earth. Here in San Antonio, is it is sad to say, because I was born here, went to school here, but there was a little jealousy there. Okay, they they would one time. I'm not gonna mention the show, but I was at this big show. And they, I didn't have my shoes because they, they broke my heel. They would they hide my flowers. They, they did a lot of things for me, for not to fall. I said, I'm not dancing, Kuro. I was crying. He goes, why? I said, because I don't have shoes. They broke my heel. And my flowers, I don't know where they are. I don't know what can happen to my flowers. So Kuro goes, oh, you know what? You are going to dance. You're going you're gonna to dance gypsy. He goes, gypsy? She goes, yes. You, you're going to go outside. You're going to go perform with no shoes, barefooted. Take that chunk off. I said, no, take it off. You're going to have with your hair long, loose, no flowers, because the gypsy don't use flowers, and you just use their costume, no, no, no shoes. So I went and performed. I came the next day on the front page of the light, on the front page that I was dancing gypsy. The director, Mr. Martinez, Raul Martinez, told us, I want to see you Monday in my office. 
and we went. And, and I said, I, I bet you they're going to get upset because I was dancing barefooted. I, I thought it was the shoes. I never thought it was something else. I thought barefooted, you know, they're not used to, you know, it's like a barefooted. Anyways, we went and they said, Mr. Teresa, Kuro, I'm going to have to let you go. And Kuro goes, why? Teresa is a good dancer. And she goes, I know, Teresa is a good dancer and you're a good guitarist. So maybe you can stay, but she cannot dance. And my husband goes, why? And, 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 she, and they say, because all the dancers and the singers and the music, they voted you. If, if Teresa dances next week, they'll all get out. And I said, okay, that, that's fine, no problem. It was no problem. I said, that's okay, Kuro. And he goes, but you can stay. And Kuro goes, if my wife doesn't stay, I don't stay. I said, no, 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 you stay, because we need to eat. We need the money. You can, you can stay, you play the guitar, and I'll be a housewife for a little while. <laughs> uh, somebody went and left a note in my mother's house and said, we need Kuro for, for tryouts for a movie the, 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 the Alamo. My mom was all excited, hi, really? Guess what, they left this note for you. They want you to be in the movie, and Kuro goes, and Teresa, she goes, no, I don't know about Teresa, but this is Kuro. They say, they say, Willy Champagne El Kuro. So he called, and he said, uh, my wife dances. She goes, yeah, we know, but we already have the dancers. We all, we have the dancers. The dancers were the ones that are, they voted for me, the Danny Wami, we have all the dancers, not me. So I said, I'm going to wait outside, Kuro. He goes, no, you're not. It's hot. You're going to you're gonna wait outside. So I went to a little corner, to a very a little corner, and I stayed there. And then, OK, Mr. Wayne, clap. That's it. Ha! Ah, and me, me, I'm clapping, too. Was it the sign said clap? I was clapping, too. Okay. I was clapping. So he looks at me, and he comes straight to me, and I said, I knew it. He's going to throw me out. I wasn't supposed to be, I'm not dancing, they're going to throw me out. I was so scared, like I'm telling you. I was not nervous, I was scared at that moment and when I danced the movie. And he went through and he goes, what do you do? And I said, I'm a dancer. He goes, how come you're not there, over there? I said, because you already have all the dancers. But you know what, the guitarist is my husband. Who is my husband, Willie Champion, my husband. And he goes, Antonia, now the director of the dancing from Spain. How come she's not with the group? She goes, I don't know, I don't know, Mr. Wayne. When I got here, they had all the dancers. She goes, you know what? I want her in the movie. Because Mr. Wayne, like I said, we already have all the movie in the costume. Like I said, Antonia, she's going to be in the movie. What's your name? And I said, my name is Teresa. She goes, Teresa's going to be in the movie. And I want her to dance on the table. And I'm thinking, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> to tell you that I'm afraid of heights. So finally, I came in. And then he goes, um, get up in the table. So he, he carries me, puts me on the table, and here I am in the table. And I said, Mr. Wayne, uh, now I got brave and I asked him, Mr. Brave, how many times do I have to dance? I was scared. He goes, how many times do I have to dance it, sir? And he goes, if you do good, one. With this big old voice, you know, this huge man, you know. And he goes, one time if you do it good. Okay, <laughs> so, so the day comes and the big thing comes and, and there was a, the time that we were going to film and I said, oh, look, Jesus, let me do it right. And I started dancing and I finished. Bah! I, I, somebody, I don't know if you've seen the film, but when I finish, when I finish, when I finish, this man went to cut my legs because I was on top of the table and they were sitting down. So I went, ah, like that. And he went up, the, he went back and he fell. I finished and he goes, bravo. And Mr. Wayne, do we do it again? No, that's it. One time only. She did it great. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. I was, I was, like I said, I wasn't nervous. I was scared. OK? But you, you, you don't see it. I was, I, I, this, is, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach that so everybody could have. We have flamenco right now because of me. I, I'm sorry to say that, but because of me, because I opened the doors to all the flamencos here. OK? The, everybody dance. And to tell you that the girls that voted me out, their nieces and their daughters, came to take classes with me in flamenco. I 
Rita was a dancer first and a singer. She, she started to dance uh, when she was three years old, taking classes with me and, and, and you know, dancing, flamenco. And then, but she would always sing. We put the radio and she would sing the songs from the, from the radio of the car, in the car. And we didn't know that she could do flamenco. We just heard it that she would sing in, from the car. So I learned them. And my mom turned around to tell me to stop. And my, my dad said, I told her, let her go. Let's see how far she can get. I want to see how far, at that time, would, he would tell me, Rosalinda will get to the end of this Alegrías. And my dad goes, I was in tears because you got through the whole dance. She danced it, I sang it, and my mom finished, and we finished together. And he said, that's when I realized, you know what? Rosalinda's gonna do flamenco. She's gonna be a flamenco singer. Now Elsa is, she can sing a little, but Elsa is a dancer. Elsa's a flamenco dancer. They call her a chispa. You know what the chispa is? They call her the chispa because she's little, but she's got size one on shoe, and she dances fast. I would use these at the age of five. I have the picture there. These are my first pair of dance shoes at the age of five. As you can see, the strap is no longer there and they tried them on me and I actually danced with these at um, Poco Loco nightclub, which is um, now Landers, here on the Anderson River Theater. These are my first shoes that I performed with. We, we were performing, so Greco went there with his company after the show at the Municipal Auditorium. It was the Municipal Auditorium then, it's Beethoven now. And, uh, and she, she uh, they went to the club where we were performing Poco Loco night dinner club. And, and uh, she goes, they said that your daughter dance, and I said, no, she's a singer now, she sings. She goes, no, no, the little one that was there. And I said, oh, she dances? She was two years old, and she got up and she danced with Greco, Sevillanas, and he was, he carried her, and Elsa's been there performing since she was two years old. I'll tell you what the home life was. At home, we had my dad on his guitar, my mother in, in the kitchen. We knew when it was time to eat because we could hear her practicing all her flamenco steps while she was making to eat. She would be making to eat and then she da 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 da, she would dance and so I would tell my brother, ooh, she's already making supper. We already knew because it was in the kitchen and she, that's what she would practice. And then you could hear my dad in his room and then I would go in my room and I'd practice my singing. So the house was always full of music and they never told me, you have to sing, never. I wanted to sing. I wanted to be a part of this beautiful art form called flamenco. I wanted that for me from the beginning. My dad and, and my, like I said, my, sing, my, my sister, my mom, they were doing their routine. My mom was dancing and I was in the back clapping and I was doing the palmas, which they call the hand clasp palmas. And I was seeing my mom, my dad, my mom smiling, and she would turn around looking. Then my sister singing at the same time. And I thought, man, that's kind of neat to be on stage and seeing the whole family. We're enjoying ourselves, but we're actually performing for people that sometimes we as performers don't know that we're helping people that are out there that are, came in to see a show and they're enjoying themselves. They're happy, they're excited. The, you know, seeing a family doing traditional flamenco, and then it's done, you're like, wow. I lived with my mom and dad at the beginning of when I got married, so we could get a home. And I was living there, so Annette was listening to all this. And one day she just started dancing, oh, está bailando, and she did her pretty hands, and she started dancing, and then she kept going. Because I would tell her, Annette, if you don't want to go to practice or you don't want to dance, it's okay. She's saying, I want to go, I want to go. I'm like, okay. The very first time I watched her dance was for CBS. They did a whole thing on the Arneson River and they wanted the family. And she danced, she was three years old. My grandmother was able to see that before she died. She was in a wheelchair at the very top of these stairs watching Annette perform. And she told me, ya me puedo morir contenta porque sé que hay otra generación que va a llevar lo que tu padre y tu madre han hecho con flamenco. They're taking it one more generation. She was like, that's what she was thinking. She was very ill at the time. So I was crying. When I saw her dance, I started crying because I was like, oh my God. 
My, now the granddaughter's dancing. Wow. Continuing this legacy and, and sharing it with my granddaughter is amazing. I get to see her grow. I get to see where I was when I was that age and how much joy it brings her to be on stage. The most touching moment that I've had in many, many years was to walk into the studio with her for the first time with her little black skirt with a red ruffle with a black and red and, and then stand in line with her little hands like this ready to go because she wants to dance. And my mom was doing her arm work and I was watching and then I looked at my mom and she was crying and I walked over to her. I said, are you okay, mom? And she said, I never thought I was going to be 85 and still teaching. And then my great, great granddaughter. That took my tears. I was crying. I said, I couldn't help it. Not surprising that we are going that far in our tree. And I just hope that it continues after with Melo because mom's family lives to be over 100. So who knows that SM might just be able to see that sixth one coming in at the age of three. I started dancing at the age of two. So it could be a two or three year old <laughs> that comes in, you know, to perform with us. Isabella, uh, I need Violet and I need hey. here. Here, here, so you're good. Yes. Jessica, 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 we need Jessica. So I'm going to tell them, as soon as they, they see you performing, they're going to tell you, ooh, you were related to Teresa Champion, weren't you, little one? Because my mom will probably no longer be here, but the style of dance and her footwork, they're gonna know that she was, they're part of the Champion family. Don't give up, because there's always gonna be somebody to tell you, oh, it's over. It's not over, it will never be over for us. We live in San Antonio, we are San Antonio, we are a root here in San Antonio. We are all little branches of my grandparents. They are the roots of us family and uh, continue with your passion, continue our legacy. Maybe you're not the teacher, but you can still figure out a way to push this along. I, I would hope to be as lucky as my grandmother to see a great, great grandchild. I don't know that I will, but that would be amazing. You know, I'm here in my little corner, and, and it's fine. They have many stu studios. It's fine. A lot of my students are teachers now for Parks and Recreation. They have their own studios. And I'm, I said, you know, I did something. I'm happy that Flamenco is still around. <laughs>